What is up guys, I'm Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com. Welcome back to yet another episode in our Dirt Bike Magazine Build Series. Today in episode three, I am pumped to show off some of our progress on our 2004 CR250 build, otherwise known now as T1000. For those of you unfamiliar with T1000, basically he was a character in the Terminator movie series. Maybe some of you remember, no matter how many times he was shot or stabbed or hit by cars, you could drop a bomb on this guy and he would get blown apart and he would come back together and he had a really liquid metal shiny type alloy he was made out of. And what I'm about to show you guys will make the T1000 thing make a whole hell of a lot more sense. So as some of you already know, when we picked up the 2004 CR250, Dirt Bike Mag also awarded us a 1990 CR500. For those of you who haven't seen that yet, I will go ahead and throw one of those fancy little cards right here so you guys can check it out. And for the rest of you, this will serve as episode four for the 500 as well as already previously mentioned, episode three for the CR250. So what the hell are we really talking about today? Today, I'm gonna to be going over media blasting with you guys. I'm gonna be touching on both vapor blasting, which is a wet type of blasting process, and also dry blasting. We're using both on both of these bikes for various reasons. I wanted to give you guys an idea of how it's done as well as show you some of the freaking insane results we are getting with this thing. So for the first couple episodes of the CR250 build, I just struggled to get a good project name. For whatever reason, I'm usually pretty good at it and it just took forever. I had writer's block or whatever you want to call it for lack of a better term. Now, for those of you who are not following on Instagram, which is at MX Revival, this is what you're missing out on. This is our freshly vapor blasted set of engine cases for the 2004 CR250. These came out incredible. This thing was a hot mess. It was heavily pitted. I'm actually gonna throw a photo up so you can see the difference between one case and the other just before I finished the other case off. It is absolutely shiny. It is liquid metal. This is T1000 straight up. So the idea with this bike now at least is to vapor blast the entire thing and that will set the theme for the whole bike. Uh, there's nothing out there like it yet. There will be. You guys know I like to twist things up, do things a little different. This thing has undergone a two-stage blasting process. One phase is to get all of the dirt, muck, stains, and pitting as best we can out of the cases themselves. And the second stage is actually what applies this shine. I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. And I've definitely been having a lot of fun with our brand new vapor blaster back there. Here's a little before and after for you. Quite different if I do say so myself. This thing is worth its weight in gold. And in fact, if you guys need help getting your parts back up to snuff, drop me a line, mxrevival.com, we'll get you squared away. Okay, so now that we know this is vapor blasting, what the hell is that anyways? Basically, vapor blasting is a lot like dry blasting in that there is a particulate media hitting this at high rates of speed, thus cleaning the part. Dry blasting is exactly like it sounds. The media is shot onto the part with no water, whereas vapor blasting takes that media, mixes it with water, and it's then projected onto the part. To the naked eye, the main difference between the two is going to be this very shiny surface. To my knowledge, dry blasting cannot produce this type of shine, though it can get somewhat close. To recap, the main difference between wet and dry blasting is simply the water. Aside from that, vapor blasting is what creates this very shiny finish if done correctly. Now, alternatively, these are the CR500 cases. As you can see, they are very matte. They are flat. They are almost concrete in color. They have zero gloss whatsoever. This was done in the dry blast cabinet. Not only was it done in the dry blast cabinet, but we used a different type of media altogether. The type of media we use on the CR500 cases is called aluminum oxide. Now we use the aluminum oxide for two reasons. First reason is that in order to get the paint off of these cases or the black factory paint they came with, aluminum oxide is very aggressive and it cuts very quickly. The second reason why we used aluminum oxide on these cases in particular is that in order to apply a new coating of paint, or ceramic or sear coat or anything like that, the surface needs to be a little bit rough. It needs to have something that the new coating can grab onto. Uh, we use glass bead in the vapor blasting cabinet and that is exactly like what it sounds it is. It's a ton of little baby glass beads. They're round and they sort of bounce off the part. And so between aluminum oxide and glass bead, you could see why one or the other hitting the part would polish it or make it very dull. So I also think it's worth noting that you can use any type of media that you want in any cabinet that you want. And the reason that we have two cabinets is that that's really going to cut down on the time I would need to drain the vapor blaster over here out and refill it with a different type of media or the aluminum oxide that's in this little guy behind me over here. So that just saves me time 
The little cabinet was cheap. It's very purpose built. It's just aluminum oxide. It's for cases and things that are gonna need coatings. And that will really save me time and probably money in the long run. But certainly there's no rule that says you can't put aluminum oxide in the vapor blaster or glass bead in the dry blast cabinet. In addition to that, one thing that keeps the media in the cabinets lasting a really long time is to make sure that your part is pre-cleaned. So if you have cases that are really gunky and you just throw them in there, it's gonna do its job. It's gonna make the part look nice, but you're going to contaminate the media faster. So usually we will dunk the parts, give them a scrub, make sure everything we can, oil from transmissions included, is removed before we put anything through a blast process. All right, so I think that's enough talking for now. I've saved a piece from each engine that isn't complete so I can throw them into these cabinets and show you exactly how this is done. All right, before we get started, and for those of you who are interested in picking up a vapor blasting cabinet, this guy from Raptor Blaster, large enough to fit a frame, it's pretty dang big, cost me over seven grand. So it's got a pretty high barrier to entry if you're just a garage guy. Uh, additionally to that, the compressor you need to push enough air to keep this thing working properly was a little over $3,000, and that's pretty typical. So not the end of the world. That's where Dry Blast comes in. Dry Blast is so much more affordable. You can get a nice cabinet for about a thousand bucks, actually less. You can even get little cheap ones at Harbor Freight that'll probably get you started for the guys just doing this at home. And there's no shame in that whatsoever. Dry Blast won't give you quite the same shine that Vapor will, as we've already mentioned, but everything I pulled out of my Dry Blast cabinets always made me smile. I never was disappointed with it ever. If you guys are interested in a really nice Dry Blast cabinet that's almost as big as this, does a great job and is much more affordable. I used to own a blast cabinet from a company called Scat Blast. Look that up online, Google it, whatever you have to do. Um, you'll be able to get something you really like and it won't break the bank. So this little cabinet was cheap. It was like 500 bucks. You put it together yourself and it's gonna be fine for what I need it for. I would still recommend the Scat Blast over this thing. This thing leaks like crazy. If you could see the amount of aluminum oxide that's been getting out of it somehow and getting onto the ground, you'd be pretty disappointed. For me, it will work, but I do wear a dust mask or a particulate mask when I use it because it's not good to breathe that stuff. And if you spend a little bit of extra money on a better cabinet, you just won't have the leaking issue in the first place. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me on today's video. I'd be pumped to have you alongside me on future videos. You can do that by subscribing to the channel. Also, if you could do me a solid and go ahead and give this video a like, I would greatly appreciate it. We'll let the YouTube algorithm know we are kicking ass. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next video.